we are rolling. Hey y'all, Bill Quirk with the Defensive Training Group and Shoot GTR. Out here to do the follow-up on the video we just got through filming, which is going to talk about the rest of my everyday carry equipment. So, when we start discussing everyday carry, people tend to focus on the gun, maybe the holster, but primarily the gun. And obviously that is the centerpiece of the entire system. But there are a lot of other things that go into that. So first of all, uh, I use the word system, and that word is very specific and very deliberately considered. This should be a system that works with your life, with your body, with the type of clothes that you wear, with the environments that you find yourself in. If it's something that's not comfortable, and it's not, it's never gonna be as comfortable to have all this stuff on as to not have it on. So you want it to be as comfortable as possible. But if it's really, really unpleasant, really, really uncomfortable, obviously you're not gonna to wanna to use it. You're gonna find excuses to not carry your equipment. So when you're setting all this stuff up, you need to pay some consideration to how does it integrate with my life and uh, will it have a minimal impact to my ordinary existence so that it's something I'll actually commit to and stick with and have with me if I ever need it in the unlikely situation that you might. So we already talked about the holsters and the gun and whatnot. Uh, now we're going to talk about the rest of it. So the first thing, the foundation for all of this uh, structurally is the belt. It's what holds your pants up. It's what's gonna support a lot of this gear. It's what's gonna support the holster and the weight of the pistol, any spare ammunition, all that kind of stuff. So what I use and what I've used for years is uh, the Aegis belt from Ares gear. And these are just super duper. This is the Gen 2 with the polymer buckle. They used to make them with a metal buckle, which was a little bit heavier. Um, these are their updated version and uh, very lightweight, but very, very durable. And get the belt on there and clamp down and this is nice and solid not going to go anywhere the belt itself is reinforced so that it's nice and stiff not too stiff so it's uncomfortable but it's nice and stiff so that it'll support the weight of all that equipment that's wrapped around your waist um, these i cannot speak highly enough about these these are outstanding uh, i've known jake for for quite a while and he makes really really solid top notch gear you're not going to go wrong with that so uh, the next thing we'll talk about is the knife um, the knife is, uh, it could be a secondary survival weapon. Um, certainly uh, that is a possible role, but generally this is just gonna be a tool. So this one is the Emerson Sachs knife, and that refers to the blade profile up here. It's a Viking design. But uh, this is the one that I've been carrying for quite a while now, and I need to oil this thing up and clean it a little bit. I'm getting some, some bad spots in there but um, this is more of a tool than anything else it's for opening mail opening boxes doing whatever I need it to can it be a defensive option sure it can if you're carrying a knife as a defensive tool I implore you get some training with it to make sure you know how to use it in that role don't just assume that it's easy I can just start stabbing things uh, there's a bit more to it than that, a bit more that goes into it. Learning to deploy this thing effectively, consistently, efficiently so that you can get it out and do what you need to do. That's a big part of that, just like drawing the handgun. So this is the knife that I carry. The flashlight. So of all of your everyday equipment, this is probably, arguably, one of the most, if not the most important, even more so than the gun. The utility of a good flashlight, I just cannot tell you. So right off the bat, obviously, I can use this when I drop my keys and I can illuminate to find uh, keys or things that I've dropped or whatever in the dark spaces. Even if you only go out during the daytime, and I never go out at night, so I'm never gonna need a light. Well, even during the daytime, if you go into a dark building, suddenly you find yourself in low light, no light. This can help you. Uh, as a detective, um, I always carried a light back in the day. And my fellow detectives would give me a hard time. Oh my God, you carry all this equipment. Why do you carry that? And then inevitably, hey, can I borrow your light? I dropped something. I need to see something. And my answer would be no, because you made fun of my light. No, I would let them borrow it. And they would learn the utility of having something like this. The nice thing about a good flashlight is it's benign, or a flashlight in general. It's benign. It can go anywhere with you. It can go into a courthouse, on an airplane, uh, in a non-permissive environment. You can always have this with you. And uh, in addition to the utility, this does give you a good light with good output, the candela stuff that we talk about, a good focused hotspot, good pushing energy out along a specific path. This can be a use of force option in and of itself. 
Um, and sometimes this might be all that you have. I've got the Theorem switchback ring mounted up here and it just bolts on uh, under the end cap. And that gives me the belt clip and then also a point, an index point, so I can hold on to it. And if my hand opens up, I'm not gonna drop the light. Uh, the way this is designed, um, a friend of mine designed, designed all this stuff and put a lot of thought into it. So there's there are weapon manipulation techniques that can be based on uh, this design. You can do different things. Not so much with the mod light because it's got a protected end cap but with uh, some other lights. You can actually run this as you're holding your gun and use your knuckle to activate the light. It doesn't really work well with the mod light again because of the design, but on the other lights you can do that. But also you've got a strike point here. Uh, if this is what you're using, you can punch with this and get a little bit of a, a, a specific pressure point index there. And it's designed to break away if necessary so that your finger doesn't get trapped and uh, broken or something. This will pop loose if, uh, if enough force is applied to it. So that's just a good little feature. Let's me carry it in my pocket. It hides in plain sight. But this is a fantastic piece of equipment to have with you. Uh, the Mod Light is, um, in my opinion, uh, certainly one of the best, if not the, the best right now. This is just like on my pistols, the head that's on here is the PLHB2, which gives us the best combination of throw, that hot spot, good candela going out on a specific path, but also good spill for situational awareness, which, which the handheld where we might be looking for things, that spill is important as well because it does increase our situational awareness. So these are phenomenal, cannot recommend one of these enough. If you have nothing else, even if you choose not to carry a gun, get a good flashlight and carry that with you always. Medical equipment is something that is frequently neglected and also very, very important. So everywhere I go, I carry a tourniquet. And this is on a Filster flat pack, which just clips onto my belt. And I wear this on the point of my left hip, accessible by both hands. It's just retained by these bungees. This is a Cat 7 tourniquet. Um, there are several good tourniquets out there. This is uh, certainly one of the best, one of the most proven. I like this one for my application. In other words, if I'm gonna have to put this on me, this is a little bit easier than some of the other ones to put on uh, an individual to self-treat with. There are some other good ones, the SOFT Wide, for example, that is an outstanding product, but it's really better uh, for putting it onto another person, just the way that it, it comes together as far as the manipulation and cinching it down before you start to apply the windlass. Uh, this one is, is, is good, is better for an individual putting it on themselves. So this is why I carried this for me on my belt. And like I said, this goes right on the point of my left hip, right down there, clipped onto my belt, under my shirt, obviously, and um, have this everywhere I go, get to it with either hand. This allows me to do things. So I walk a lot. I'm out walking around in my neighborhood up on, um, on the major roads. And if I come across a car crash or something, I can save a life. So it's not even necessarily gun related. It's just, it's medical equipment that I can use to save someone's life. Now going along with that, this hides in my bellows pocket and uh, it hides in plain view. It's just a Amazon basics tech pouch. This is for charging cables and stuff and whatnot. But what I've got in mind is my trauma kit. So I've got some combat gauze, I've got a set of gloves, I've got a compression bandage, and then uh, chest seals. Everything fits in here nice and neat. It's a single serve type of situation. And again, this can help me save a life. Now a quick comment about your medical gear. Don't go crazy, carry what you are trained and capable of using. So I know people that have decompression needles and airways and whatnot, and I've been trained to use those, but I'm not really all that comfortable or competent with them uh, from limited exposure. This stuff I know how to use, a compression bandage, chest seals, the combat gauze, I know how to use those things. I can pack wounds, I can do stuff with them. Um, so I stick to my limitations. Man's gotta know his limitations, person's gotta know his limitations, or her, his or her limitations, sorry. Um, I carry what I know that I can use. So I don't worry about trying to get too fancy. I just carry the basics. The tourniquet is the most important thing. Uh, uncontrolled extremity bleeding is the single most, single most preventable uh, type of injury in combat or uh, you know, in whatever the case may be. So 
that goes over the other stuff that I'm going to have on. And like I said in the first video, if you see me out in the world in Publix or something on a day where I didn't even come to the range, I'm going to have all this stuff on. Um, even with my unconventional setups, which we'll talk about in later videos, I'm going to have all of this stuff somewhere on or about me, uh, whether in a pack or physically on my body, uh, because these are the life-saving tools that I know how to use and that I've committed to carrying with me at all times. Make it part of your habit, make it part of your life, make sure it integrates as a system into what you do, and then commit to it, because you never know what the fight's gonna be, you never know when the fight's gonna come. It's gonna be what it is, when it is, and the question will be, are you prepared at that point or not? So, as always, if you have any questions, uh, put them below, give us a like, give us a share, y'all stay safe.